That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. A box? Are you crazy? No, sir. Slaves ain't allowed to be crazy, and you will know. It just might not be such a bad idea, Henry. Not such a bad idea at all. But the danger... If I'm not free, I might as well be in a box anyway. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. This very room reeks of dejection, despondency, undusted cobweb furnishings, black drapes covering the window. Here, let me throw them back and at least get some moonlight, if not sunlight, into this place. In the doorway. What is it? <laughs> Madeline! Am I that horrifying to look upon, dear brother? Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. This is Lauren Green. You're listening to the sounds of a human auction being held in Richmond, Virginia. The year is 1849. This morning, gentlemen, we got 20 choice bodies for sale, and I don't want anybody to feel shy about making a bid. Your money ain't earning all that much in the bank. May as well spend it on something that you can use. <laughs> now then, let's get down to the business at hand before the midday heat begins. All right, Roy, let's bring that first one up here. Now, don't mind them tears. That's just one of her tricks. As y'all can see very well, whoever gets this one will be getting double for his money. <laughs> yeah, in about another month or so, you'll be having a new field hand or a fine lady's maid. Now then, let's start the bidding. Do I hear a bid of $800 for this double deal? $800. Do I hear $850? Nine? Nine. Nine. Bid by Master Davis. Do I hear nine five oh? I remember, gentlemen, you're getting double your money's worth. And if I'm not mistaken, it won't be the last time. To my experience, I, we got a prime breeder here. Do I hear 950? Do I hear 1,000? 1,000. Ah, 1,000. Now, do I hear 1,050? Let's bid them in, gentlemen. Let's bid them in. Top flesh demands top dollar. Do I hear 1,050? 1,050. Go in. Go in. Gone. Sold to Master Davis for $1,050. Take it out, Roy. What would you do under those conditions? Henry Box Brown was a real person. He was a slave who dreamed, schemed, and planned to be free at any cost. What we do know, if the history of oppression teaches us anything, is this. A human being's will to be free by any means necessary is one of the most powerful forces on Earth. Even though the means of gaining freedom might be bizarre. And that's how this story begins. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Henry Box Brown by Odie Hawkins. Our star, Don Blakely. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Strong! 
strawberries. Don't wear with hand painted strawberries. 45 piece set plus extra serving bowl. Sears strawberries. Sears hand painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks. And durable, this dishwasher safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries. Sears stoneware with hand painted strawberries. At most larger Sears retail stores. I've been working with furniture for 25 years, so I know about quality. And that's why I recommend a Sears Benchmade sofa for your family. There's a heavy-duty hardwood frame braced to withstand stress. The coil spring construction gives long-lasting comfort. And you can choose from fabrics and attractive solids or bright prints, all treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector. Compare the quality of a Sears Benchmade with other fine sofas, and you'll be surprised. Styling, durability, and comfort. Benchmade, a great place to relax. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. The story begins on a warm day in March of 1849 in Richmond, Virginia. Henry Brown, occupation slave, walks into his neighborhood general store. Despite the fact that he's been a slave for all of his 33 years, there is an undefinable something in his eyes that tells us he doesn't think like a slave. He's small, about five foot five or so muscular from years of handling heavy bales of tobacco leaves and he has one hundred and sixty six dollars hidden in the lining of his hand-me-down coat money earned penny by penny over the years doing odd jobs well now uh, what can we do for you today henry nothing too much mr yancey a little salt maybe and uh, a, a little snuff what's the trouble henry you looks like you got a ton of bricks on each shoulder. I kind of feel that way, Mr. Yancey. Your wife, huh? Yes, sir, my wife. Her master sold her down south. I didn't find out about it till yesterday when I got my pass to go over to see her. Mm-hmm. She was owned by the Stovels, wasn't she? Yes, sir. Did you talk to your master about buying her like I told you to? Yes, sir. I begged him to, and he said he would, but he didn't. Who bought her? I don't know. She was brought up in a batch that was being taken south to be resold. I'll never see her again. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't agree with you, Henry. It seems about the best thing for you to do is ask your master to uh, buy you another wife. I, I don't want another slave woman for a wife. Somebody that can be bought and so... Now, whoa, now, just, just take, take it easy, Henry. Now, listen, I, I know how you feel. Uh, you know how I feel? You're damn right I do. I'm a man, same as you. I know how I'd feel if I was in your shoes. Are you saying you know how it feels to be a slave? I would never be a slave, and I would never own one. You know, Mr. Yancey, I've been thinking for a long time about not being a slave. Oh? Yes, sir. I've been thinking about not being a slave for a good long while. Does your master know anything about what you're thinking? Oh, no, sir. You're the only one who knows. And the only reason I'm telling you is careful, because... Careful, careful, Henry. I think you're getting a little bit off the mark here. I don't think so, Mr. Yancey. Not if all the talks we've had have any truth in them. Now, I've heard you say from time to time that every man is entitled to his liberty. Did you really mean that? I'm a man of my word. You know that. Mr. Yancey... What would you say if I ask for your help to get out of Virginia out of slavery? I'm a businessman, Henry. I'm not a lawbreaker. What if we just thought of it as a business deal? <laughs> well, uh, uh... Now, I've heard you say that business is just a matter of dollars and cents. Now, I've got $166. And I wouldn't give 
You all of it, if you help me. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know quite what to say, Henry. I mean, uh, helping slaves run away is a serious matter. <laughs> please, please help me, Mr. Yancey. Please, I, I don't know anyone else I can turn to. I'm sick and tired of belonging to somebody like a dog or a horse. I want to be a free man. Mr. Yancey? On guard. Effective fencing demands style and endurance. That includes fencing around your home. Sears Armadillo Chain Link Fencing has both, setting off your house and helping protect your home. How? For starters, Sears Armadillo Framework has three protective coatings that work together for a lustrous, highly rust-resistant frame. Gates even match the fencing design for uniformity. So call your local Sears soon for your free home estimate. Armadillo Chain Link Fencing at most larger Sears retail stores. A kiss good night, and your gift of Sears Nightwear will send Mom sweetly into dreamland this Mother's Day. They're winsome, billowy nightgowns and sprightly PJs. Or complete the appeal with a short or long dressing gown. Ruffles, spaghetti straps, prints, or solids. Just a few dreamy ways to choose Sears Nightwear. All airy nylon trico, loosely shaped for sleeping comfort. This Mother's Day, give Mom pretty nightwear from Sears. And sweet dreams. Separates ablaze with color fireworks. Yet made of 100% cotton pointel knit to keep you cool and comfortable all summer. And just because they're natural doesn't mean they're neutral. Discover a gently gathered skirt, a cap sleeve shirt, a tank top, all bursting in colors, just waiting to be mixed or matched. For a day in the sunshine or a night under the stars, color fireworks is what's happening in Mrs. Pointel Separates. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. They stood there, uneasy, staring at each other. The black man pleading. The white man, unsure, frightened perhaps. Then the white man wiped the perspiration off his forehead with the sleeve of his worn shirt. Well, uh, what can I say? Uh, I guess I would be a hypocrite if I didn't help you, but... Uh... Let's not misunderstand each other. This is strictly a business deal. You say you have $160. Yes, sir. A hundred and sixty-six dollars. <laughs> I'll charge you half of that. Fair enough? That's more than fair. More than fair. Good, good. Now, let's hear your plan. What have you got in mind? I, I hadn't thought of anything, Mr. Yancey, other than being free. That's the only thing that's been on my mind. Well, I understand that, Henry, but... You need more than thoughts. You need a plan. Now, in order for you to get out of Virginia, we're going to have to figure out a way to get you past the patrols. As you know, with that Harriet Tubman woman running wild, stealing slaves and running back north with them, the patrols are pretty heavy. I know. I got a whipping last week because they caught me on the road after dark. If it hadn't been for Master's note, it might have been worse. Well, you know how it is. <laughs> Lots of folks still have Nat Turner on the brain. Let's see now, what can we come up with? We had a mulatto woman to dress up like a white man and uh, use her dark-skinned husband to drive her out of Georgia. You hear about that? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know any mulatto ladies with coaches that need drivers? Well, not offhand, Mr. Yancey. <laughs> now, today is the 15th. Let's put our minds on this for a couple of days and see what we can come up with. I sure do thank you, Mr. Yancey. Now, there's no thanks needed, Henry. Like I said, it's strictly a business deal. You said you had the money with you? Oh, oh yes, I got it. Here in my coat lining. D don't, don't pull it out here. It wouldn't do for anyone walking in here to see you giving me money. Now, you go in the back room and you place it between them two flower sacks over in the fire corner. I went to work every day scared. I wondered, had Mr. Yancey, the storekeeper, just taken my money? Could I trust him? Would he help me and then betray me? If so, I could have an aura for runaway branded on my face. I could have a foot chopped off. I could get 50 lashes or 100 with a bull hide whip. I could be sold into the deep south where I could never get away. I could be killed for trying to escape. And no one could do nothing about it. Then 
Once I was talking to Mr. Yancey, and this idea popped into my head. A box. That's it. I could escape in a box. A box? Are you crazy? No, sir. Slaves ain't allowed to be crazy, and you will know. A box? <laughs> Wait a minute. It... It just might not be such a bad idea, Henry. Not such a bad idea at all. But the danger... If I'm not free, I might as well be in a box anyway. Well, then I think it just might work. I tell you what. I just happen to know a man named McKim in Philadelphia who just happens to be a red-hot abolitionist. Perhaps he'd be of help. When do I leave? Hold your horses. I'm going to have to contact him first to see if he'll be available to receive you and all. You wouldn't want to be stuck in the baggage room of some train station for a week, would you? Hmm? You go see if you can get yourself a box. Mose, your master here? No, nah, he's upstairs sleeping. Full of rum, as usual. Hey, watch what you're doing. That wood's supposed to be sanded with the grain, not against it. I don't know what to say about some of these young bloods, Henry. They just don't take no pride at all in their work. I wonder why. Huh? Oh, nothing. Just talking to myself. Listen, Mose, I need a favor. How can I do you a favor? I ain't got nothing. You can do me this favor. Well, well quit beating around the bush. I got work to do. Now spit it out. I, I want you to make me a box, Mose. A box? You planning to call it a day? <laughs> what kind of box? I want the best wood you can use. Square shaped, two feet eight inches deep, two feet wide, and three feet long. And make it so the cover can be nailed on. Sounds like... Hold on a minute. Tumby, you're putting the door of that cabinet on upside down. Be sharp about yourself, boy. Yes, sir. You take a lot of pride in your work, don't you? If I didn't, you wouldn't have come to me for your box. What was that size again? Two feet, eight inches deep, two feet wide, and three feet long. You figuring to get in? It'll be a tight squeeze, Henry. It's got to look just like an ordinary dry goods box. If it was any bigger, it might look suspicious. You're right. When do you want this box? Within two days. That'll be the 28th? That's it. It'll be ready on the 27th. I'll make it myself. Uh, I, I got a little money, Mose. I, I keep could... it, Henry. You'll need it more than I will. Thanks, Mose. Now, you going to pick this up? I, I may not be able to. Uh, is there some way you can get it over to Bob Yancey's store? Bob Yancey? Yeah, well, he gets crates and stuff from here all the time. <laughs> you better get out of here. Sounds like Master Clark's in a foul mood. Oh, okay, uh, thanks again, Mose. God bless you. All right. What's going on down here? Mose! Yes, sir, Master Clark. Did I see a strange darky down here? No, sir, Master Clark. We the only ones down here. Hey, you there, Tumby! Hurry on with that tabletop. Yeah, Master Clark promised you had it ready by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, well, you get a move on before I lose my temper and take my belt to you, rascal. <laughs> Ain't no need for that, Master Clark. Everything gonna be taken care of. I just knew it had to be. I had to be a free man. But what if Mose turned me in? What if I was so scared folks would notice me? What if, what if? The only one thing I know for sure, I would be free. No matter what it cost, I would be free. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Yeah, that was about two weeks after Dad had his stroke. Did he have high blood pressure? Don't know. He's doing a little better now, but he can't speak too well. Has trouble walking too, doesn't he? 
Yeah, it's truly a shame. You have high blood pressure? I don't know. I feel okay. I'm not high strung like Dad. Whether you're high strung or low strung, whether you feel just fine or not, has nothing to do with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is a major risk factor in stroke and heart attack, but it has no obvious symptoms. It can only be detected by a simple, quick, and painless test. The American Heart Association also wants you to know that black Americans, as a group, are more likely to have high blood pressure than whites. We don't know why. But high blood pressure can usually be controlled if it's detected. For more information, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. If the tensions of the days and nights that Henry Brown only thought of freedom had been a strain, one can imagine how he felt on March 27, 1849, two days before his scheduled move to the north. But you don't understand, Henry. I haven't heard from my friend in Philadelphia. What happens if you get in the box, they deliver it, and no one comes to collect it? You could be shipped back to starve to death or something. I'd die a free man, Mr. Yancey. Maybe I'm not making myself plain, Henry. My friend hasn't answered my letter. Now, that may mean he didn't get my letter, or that it was lost, or I don't know what. It is too much of a chance to take. I'm willing to take that chance, Mr. Yancey. I can see that you are, Henry. I can see that you are. All right, all right. Everything's all set. The box is here. You're ready to go. But how are you going to provide a cover for yourself to get away? You're going to need a few hours at least. Well, I'll manage that between today and tomorrow. What are you talking about, Brown? You done hurt your hand? You still got another one you can use. Now get on back to your bench. Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen, I done hurt my left hand too, sir. What? Your left, too? Here, let me see. Well, what can I do about it, sir? Well, ain't nothing can be done for you here. Looks like you've managed to knock your mast out of half a day's pay. I'm sure he won't be too happy with you about that. Now, if I thought you was deliberately trying to slough off on me, I'd take my whip to your backside. My hand is, is really hurt, Mr. Allen. You can see for yourself. Yeah, guess you are telling the truth. Go on home and get some poultices of flax meal and put that on it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Allison. Hey, boy. Come back here. Huh? Who, me? Yeah, you. Who do you think you are? Do you know you just walked right between us? Sorry, I... Boy, uh, you got a name. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, Tom Washington, sir. What's your master's name? My master's name. You got a master, ain't you? Or are you a runaway? Oh, no, sir. I ain't run away. My master's name is Mr. Edward Jefferson. Does your master know that you run up and down the streets trying to knock people down? No, sir. Oh, so you do try to knock people down? No, 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 sir. I, I never... I What's mean, that I, sign say? The one across the street in that window. Uh, I, I don't know, sir. I can't read. You sure? Yes, yeah, sir. Gene, you think this little rascal's telling the truth? It's hard to say. Ain't no telling about the ones who run up and down the street trying to bump into people and whatnot. Maybe we ought to have him rested and have his master come get him. That'd teach him a lesson. I, I, I'm truly sorry. It's just that that Master Jefferson told me to hurry back with the snuff, and I was thinking what about... What happened to your hands? Oh, uh, 
Well, the master got mad and stomped on him because I was too slow bringing his hat. <laughs> well, looks like you're in for a little more stomping. Yes, yeah, sir. In the future, you be sure and show some respect for people, you understand? Yes, yeah, sir. Now, get. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> I was, uh, I was beginning to think you weren't going to make it. Me too. Now, you're in luck. I just got a letter in the afternoon post from my friend in Philadelphia. He wishes us luck, and he promised he'd be at the depot to claim you. You'll be gone by Adams Express all the way to Philadelphia. The trip should take between 27 and 37 hours, provided the handlers give your box express service all the way. And what time do I leave? 4 a.m. You got about eight hours yet. Henry... What happened to your hands? I had to do something to get off work. Come on in back. We'll put some flax mill poultices on it. Henry, wake up. It's time. I'm not asleep, Mr. Shh, Yancey. Shh, keep, keep your voice down. I got a man with a wagon outside who thinks he's taking a box of goods to the express office. You got everything you need? Did you bore the air holes in? Yes, sir. Three really small ones in each side. Good. I think it might be a good idea to keep the gimlet with me, just in case. That's a good idea. You got water? Full blood and a few biscuits. You want to take more food? I won't need it. I'll save my appetite for freedom. Good luck, Henry. Who knows? I might go into the box shipping business if you prove to be profitable. About ready to tote that out of here, Mr. Yancey? Uh, just, just as soon as I nail the cover on... God bless you, Mr. Yancey. Okay, okay, Johnny. All set to go. You want to come back here and give me a hand with this? Mm. A pretty fair-sized load, huh, Mr. Yancey? Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way it is, Johnny. Them, uh, <laughs> them Yankee ladies hate our guts, but they love our cotton cloth. <laughs> There we go. Now, remember, Johnny, you try to keep up the side that's marked, because I'd kind of like to keep the stuff inside straight. Do my best, Mr. Yancey. Do my best. Get up. And good luck to you, Henry Brown. <laughs> I felt like screaming, let me out, let me out of here. I couldn't take being cooped up like I was, cramped in a sitting position with just enough room for me to move my arms a bit and shift my weight slightly. Well, one position became tiresome. From Bob Yancey's store to the express office was a mile. It's a mile I'll never forget. Going that mile stuffed up in that little wooden box, I had a chance to go back through everything that had ever happened to me. Most of what came to mind was pretty ugly not knowing who my mom and daddy was because we had been sold off to different folks. I thought about being whipped out to work before the sun came up, having barely enough to eat and hardly enough clothes to cover my body, even in the wintertime. Work, all the time work, a field hand. Once, there was an overseer who was so mean, he used to whip people's eyes out of their heads. Master liked that, because he could get so much work out of their hands. Didn't matter how we was treated. He could work or beat us to death and buy a new batch. They said that none of the field hands ever lived longer than five years on this man's plantation. I was in my third year when he died. Some say Dicey the cook put shade glass in his food. And Master Carson brought me into the city and hired me out. He probably saved my life. I don't think I could have lasted too much longer. Yeah. He probably saved my life, but I couldn't be too grateful because I was still a slave. A whole bunch of things went through my mind traveling that mile to the express office. I prayed. I prayed to Almighty God for salvation that he would not let me get caught and taken back. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. I tried to see what freedom would look like in my mind, but it was too dark. Whoa! You there? Yeah, you, with the fuzzy eyeballs. Come on over here and help me with this crate. Sir, this here crate goes to Philadelphia. 
from having seen it done on shipments of tobacco cash, I knew that the station clerk had stamped where I was going on my box. My heart was so far up in my throat, I could hardly swallow. Somebody came along after a little while, lifted my box and tipped me over into a baggage car, upside down. After a few minutes of being on my head, I felt my eyes about to pop out and the blood filling up the veins in my head. It made it feel like it was about to explode. As the train started up to go, I prayed with all my might that I would be saved from the torture of staying on my head. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Henry Box Brown. The Lord answered my prayers. Somebody pushing and moving stuff around just before the train started in order to make more room for some other baggage laid me over on my side. It took a little while for my blood to right itself, for the veins in my head to go down, but after a while, I felt like myself again. I was all right for a while, just bumping along with all the rest of the crates and baggage till this dull ache started up and down my right side, the side I was laying on. I could shift my weight off of my shoulder joint by a little to get some of the pressure off, but mostly I had a heavy, dull feeling. I just completely lost track of time. I tried going backwards to when I had started out at 4 a.m. to try to guess what time it might be. I just couldn't figure past a certain point. It didn't matter no way. Time was standing still for me. The heat of the box was really bad, and my clothes were soaking wet from sweat. From time to time, I would close my eyes and try to think of something else, a good time I had or something like that. I couldn't do it. I'd come close a few times, but then a hard, tight feeling would grab the muscle in my stomach and knock everything else out. I did think strong of my wife, Maylene. I cried a little bit, thinking about her being lost from me. No way for me to ever see her again. I felt bad. Deep down, about running away by myself. I had talked to her about running away, but she was always afraid of what would happen if we got caught. At one point, I thought I was dead. It just didn't seem that I could possibly be alive. Hardly able to move, sweat dripping off me like rainwater, every muscle stiff from being locked in place. I clenched my teeth together and tightened my messed up hands into a fist and prayed. I prayed to God to give me the strength to hold out to keep my mind together and not crack. It was like being in a hole somewhere. The box became a part of my skin and I wanted to pull my skin off, but I couldn't because my skin was the box. I became confused. My mind wouldn't work. Had I been in the box one day or two days? Or was I going in the right direction? What would happen to me if my box was going south instead of north? If somebody had made a mistake, 
somehow I could see myself in a baggage room somewhere, slowly starving to death because I had made a vow in my soul's damnation that I would rather be dead than be a slave again. I had never felt more lonely in my life than I felt at that time. bump, I knew we had come to a stop. The freight train doors were slid open, and I could hear voices and the sound of water. The motion of the boat, bouncing back and forth, rubbed the top of my head and gave me a fearsome headache. I don't know how long I was in that position. Could have been an hour, three hours, I don't know. Bouncing caused me to be sick, and I came close to drowning in my own bowel. But I prayed for the strength to carry me on, to be saved, and once again, my prayers were answered. A couple of sailors looking for a place to loaf came over to where I was. This won't do, just the right size. You got the cards? I got the cards. You bring all the money you need to lose? Uh, that's what I like, a born loser who never gives up. Nothing's cheaper than talk. I'll let my kings and queens speak for me. Here, help me lay this on the side. It took all of my willpower to keep myself from screaming when they slammed me onto my side, but at least I wasn't on my head. I thank the good Lord and the two sailors for that. Somehow it seemed that I could feel the weight of their bodies on the box. I could hardly breathe from the excitement of knowing that the slightest noise could give me away. They played a lively game of cards, slamming their cards into the box, drumming the hit their heels against the sides and all. Yeah, take that. <laughs> so talk is cheap, huh? That's right, bub. I think my ace, king, and jack of hearts beats the stuffing out of your ten of clubs, jack of spades, and queen of diamonds. <laughs> uh, just pure luck. Well, if that's all it takes to beat you, I'm satisfied. During the course of their play on my box, a fly got inside through one of their air holes I had bored in the sides. That fly caused me a heap of pure misery. It must have been one of those stinging river flies, because everywhere it crawled, it bit. It lit on my nose and walked up the middle of my nose to my forehead and back to the tip of my nose again, stinging all the way. It crawled across my left eyelid and my right eyelid and my lips, in and out of my right ear. I was tortured by that fly, something awful. And there was nothing I could do about it. I was afraid to try to squash it for fear that I'd make a noise and be discovered. Finally. Well, we better get back to work. First mate will be hopping mad if he can't find us. Besides, I think you've got about as much of my money as I want to lose today. <laughs> like I said, talk is cheap. Better luck next time. <laughs> thing happened. The minute those sailors left, the fly left too. I don't know where it went, but I was very happy that it went wherever it went. I had the sailors to thank for placing me on my side, but as you can well imagine, being in that position grew pretty tiresome too after a while. Hope, prayer, and the belief that my journey would have to come to an end, for better or worse, kept me alive. And then, as though some miracle had happened, I heard somebody say, Yep, that's Washington. I kept wondering what they were saying about me back in Richmond. That's right, completely disappeared. Old man Carson fit to be tired. What about the hounds? Ain't got no scent to work from. They took a sniff off of some of his old clothes, and every one of them started off in a different direction. Let me have a slug in that jug clock. Now, this here about the doggonest thing I ever heard of. Ain't a human body made what could disappear into thin air. Everybody thinking he went north. <laughs> Maybe he went south. Oh, come on, Bob. Ain't a donkey in this state that would run south. Say, you know something, Bob? You just might have a point there. He might head south to throw everybody off the track and then head north. No, if he did, it'd be the first time I ever heard of such. Well, I'll take a swig on that. 
Who knows? Ain't no telling what a man will do when he decide to run away. I was unloaded and placed on a wagon right side up. I was crazy to take a look at all the hustle and bustle I could hear, to take a look at things, maybe see what Washington looked like. But I had drilled the holes up high on the box in order to keep people from peeking in. Bumping along in the wagon to the train depot, I passed a section where I could smell greens, side meat, candied yams, hush puppies, and barbecue. The smells made my mouth water. I realized I was hungrier than I had been in quite a while. I managed to fumble a couple of soggy biscuits in my mouth and drink a little water. Washington seemed to be hotter than any place I'd been in my box so far. We were at the train depot. I could hear train sounds like in Richmond and somebody jumping up on the wagon to unload it. The way I figured it, I had two more times to be unloaded. This time, and when we got to Philadelphia, I felt like a wet dish rag. Hey, Boomer, give me a hand to this box. I'm busy. I'll push it off and drag it on over to the loading platform. But it's got this, uh, this side up with care marked on it. Ah, who cares? Company can make it good if you break anything. The next thing I knew, I had this feeling of falling through the air. My neck made a cracky sound when the box hit the ground, and I was knocked out of my mind for a while. I was about ready to give up. I didn't feel I could take any more, especially after I heard the two freight hands discussing whether or not they had enough room for my box. And one of them made up his mind. Says Express. Express it is. <laughs> I was loaded on the train, and on my way, within a short while, my neck, my whole body bruised and aching. I was halfway out of my senses most of the time. I felt like beating my fist against the wall of the box to ask somebody to get me out. But I was too weak. And besides, nobody would have heard me in the baggage car anyway. It seemed to me, when the train slowed and I knew we were in Philadelphia, it seemed that I had been in this box for all of my natural life. Philadelphia made it, but I still had to be careful. I could be discovered still and taken right straight back to Virginia. They had had cases of that happening to runaways. Slave catchers was always hanging around train depots. I was unloaded and placed with the other freight. I could feel other boxes being bumped against me. Would the man who was supposed to claim the box come? Do we have some kind of mix-up about times or dates? A thousand doubts played on my mind. Maybe I would simply remain wherever I was until I died. My neck felt like it was broken, and I was seeing red spots in front of my eyes. I had come a long way, and yet I was nowhere. It seems that I was there thinking all these kinds of thoughts for an awful long time before I felt my box being moved. Someone had come to claim me. Man had an Irish voice. I'm here to pick up a box from Richmond, Virginia for Dr. McKim. Here's the receipt. I was once again loaded on a wagon, head up this time, thank God, and hauled away. By now, I felt I could hang on a little longer. The Irish voice delivered me to a house. I just held my breath. Ah. Oh. That's a heavy box, Dr. McKim. Oh, thank you, Dan. Uh, uh, this is for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Are you alive, Henry, inside there? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm alive. Oh, my God. Catch him before he falls. I'll be all right, sir. Just a little weak, but I'll be all right now. I'm a free man. Some of the details of the story we've just heard were altered. The dialogue invented. But the basic truth is this. On March 29th, 1849, 
a slave named Henry Brown, had himself nailed into a box in Richmond, Virginia, traveled 350 odd miles in 27 hours to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and was uncrated by Dr. J. M. McKim, Professor C. D. Cleveland, Mr. Lewis Thompson, and Mr. William Still, abolitionists. They nicknamed him Box, and that's the name by which we know him today, Mr. Henry Box Brown. ahead wearing Sears Action Playwear for juniors. They're saucy yellow bibbed overalls with a striped tank top underneath. What a look! But wait, another girl in bright blue pleated shorts and rugby style shirt hops up from behind. Ladies and gentlemen, who win this leapfrog race? Both look like winners in these cool cotton tops and bottoms of cotton and polyester. All bright summer wow colors. And they're, they're tied! Sears Junior Action Playwear for championship looks! Mary had a little lamb. This is the actual voice of Thomas Edison. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Preserved just as it was recorded on his talking machine. When Sears decided to help preserve Edison's Fort Myers home, we used the Weather Beater, our best long-lasting tough exterior latex paint. This paint covers trim, doors, and siding in one coat when used as directed. And it helps protect against weather's worst. Sears Weather Beater. For great American homes, like yours. Your mom. By nature, she's different than any other mother in the world. Whether she's social, romantic, offbeat, or as classic as apple pie, you'll find a special fragrance to fit her nature at Sears. For Mother's Day, choose Revlon's Charlie for the contemporary woman on the run. Chantou, the essence of ever-so-soft romance. Or Prince Machiavelli favorites like Winsong, Aviance, or Cachet. This Mother's Day, discover gifts of fragrance that capture the nature of every woman at Sears. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears where America shops for value. Henry Box Brown was written by Odie Hawkins, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our star was Don Blakely. Also heard were Dawes Butler, Marvin Miller, Peggy Weber, Don Diamond, Barney Phillips, Howard Culver, Jack Carroll, William Lally, and Paul Reed Roman. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. You've changed, Bernard. You're not the man I married. What do you mean, Francine? Remember the way you were? Vulnerable? You made mistakes. But now, look, you're confident. Everything you do turns out right. It's that book you sent away for. It's just a catalog mm. from the Consumer Information Center. It lists more than 200 federal publications you can send for. On building, fixing, eating... Buying, selling, working, playing, living... And more than half of them are free. Yes, Francine, the man you married is gone for good. Mm. All right, Bernard. But would you make just one more mistake for old time's sake? All right. For you, oh. I'll just replace that window glass like I used to. Whatever you do, learn to do it better. Send for your free catalog. Just write Consumer Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Francine, send for that publication on first aid. What was that address? Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Dear Abby, a listener writes, Now that my husband's gone, I've tried to open my own charge accounts and have been turned down. It seems all our credit was listed in his name. Now I'm told I have no credit record in my own name. Signed, Stuck. Dear Stuck, this is a real problem for many women. Four out of five of you will one day be on your own. But if you know your rights, you can help protect yourself against future credit rejection. So take some advice from Dear Abby. Call or write stores where you and your husband share charge accounts. 
have them listed in both names, yours as well as his. Say you want joint charge accounts listed as Mrs. Mary Jones as well as Mr. John Jones, so you will have a history of credit too. The law gives you that right. For more information, write for the free booklet, Women and Credit Histories, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. That's Women and Credit Histories, FTC, Washington, D.C., 20580. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. Harry. Of course. Greg, Greg, oh, buddy. Harry. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> well, you know, you know. Uh, no, lady. Come on, come on. Two, Two four, four, six, six eight. Who do we appreciate? Moose Bay, Moose Bay. Rah, rah, rah. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.